Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Union Zor Education. Um, I will uh, talk about certain very simple theorems, mini theorems as I call them, related to parallel lines. Um, in the lecture which is related to the parallel lines, uh, basically I was proving one and very, very important theorem in, in many different incarnations. It's a theorem about two parallel lines and transversal and basically stating that uh, the characteristic property of the parallel lines if there is such a situation is that either alternate interior angles are equal or corresponding angles are equal or sum of uh, one-sided interior or exterior is equal to 180 degrees etc. And every theorem of this type has the corresponding converse theorem. So basically, um, that what makes actually the angles, the congruence of angles, uh, a characteristic property of parallelism of the lines. They're always going together. It's a necessary and sufficient condition to have these angles uh, congruent for the lines to be parallel. So. Um, I have a few problems, little problems, mini theorems as I call them, which I'm going through right now. Uh, they are in the notes. I do encourage you to, uh, to try to prove them yourselves. They're very simple. And uh, here I will just do it one by one. Okay, a perpendicular to one of two parallel lines is a perpendicular to another one. All right, so if you have two different parallel lines and you have a perpendicular to one of them, then it's perpendicular to another. Obviously, it follows from uh, uh, the theorem which I was talking about before. These are um, exterior alternate angles, and since the lines are parallel, the perpendicular can be considered as a transversal. That's why these angles are uh, congruent to each other. If this one is the right angle, then this, way, this one is the right angle. End of story. Two perpendiculars to the same line are parallel to each other. Very similar. If you have two perpendiculars to the same line, then these two perpendiculars should be considered as two lines with this line as a transversal, and since these are corresponding angles in this case, and the congruence of the corresponding angle, uh, angles is a, a, uh, is a characteristic property of the parallel lines, that's why these two lines are parallel among themselves. End of story. Very simple theorems, as you see. But, you know, you have to use uh, this quality of parallel lines and, and transversal relatively you know, freely and you, you, you should be ready to apply it to any simple problems. Okay, perpendicular and a non-perpendicular to the same line intersect, not parallel. Alright, so if these are perpendicular and not perpendicular to the same line, they must intersect. Well, consider they're not intersecting. Well, what does it mean? It means they're parallel. If they are parallel, then the corresponding angles must be congruent, which means these two angles must be congruent to each other. This one is right, that's why this one is right, which contradicts the premise of the theorem that this is not a perpendicular. Okay, next one two angles with correspondingly parallel lines, uh, sides are congruent or supplementary to each other. All right, so you have one angle and another angle with parallel lines. Now, uh, this theorem states that these two angles are either congruent or supplemental to each other. Now, what I will do is the following. I will continue in both directions, all four rays which make these two angles. 
So, these two angles, now it is obvious uh, that these two angles, actually these four angles, must be congruent to each other. Why? Because this and this are parallel. Considering this one as a transversal, you have the corresponding angles. Now, if these two are considered to be parallel and this one as a transversal, then these two angles are corresponding and must be congruent. Similarly, these two lines and this as a transversal, then these two angles are corresponding and congruent to each other. And these are vertical to all these congruent angles. And what are these guys? These are all the supplementary angles to, 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 to these ones. So, double arced, all double arced angles are supplementary to single arc angles. So basically we have only two uh, angles, single arc and double arc angles. All other angles are basically congruent to one of these. So among 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 16, 16 different angles which we have when we have uh, two pairs of parallel lines, they are all either uh, congruent to each other or supplemental to each other. There are only two basically different types of angles here. This one and this one. Everything else is congruent. So that's why if you have just two angles, let me go back to what we have started with. You have this angle and this angle with parallel uh, sides, then obviously it's either this angle or that angle. So in this case, you have these two congruent. In this case, oh, obviously, you also have parallel sides. So in this case, you have angles supplementary to each other, this one and this one. All right, that proves the point. Next. Two angles with, with corresponding with perpendicular sides are congruent or supplementary to each other. Now, very similar, but uh, the proof is supposed to be somehow different. So you have perpendicular and this one perpendicular. So this perpendicular to this, and this perpendicular to this. So the statement of the theorem is that these two angles are either supplementary to each other or congruent to each other. Well, obviously, if you have this angle, then this would be supplementary. Uh, this will be congruent, and this one will be supplementary on this particular drawing. Now, how to prove it? Okay. Um, the best way is to use this vertex as an origin of an angle congruent to this one. So, how can we do it? Well, construct the line from this line, from this point parallel to this, and another line parallel to this one. So, obviously, these two angles are congruent, as we have proven just before in the previous uh, theorem, or if we um, made a different step and consider this angle, which is also parallel to this, then we have to prove that these two are congruent. So, basically what we have done is we have moved this angle to the common uh, vertex with the first angle. Now, does it make our life easier? Well, just a little bit. Now we know that this is a perpendicular and this is perpendicular, right? So, 
In this particular case, uh, uh, it, it is obvious that if we will make another turn of the picture, rotate the picture um, by 90 degree, not the entire picture, just this particular angle. So what would happen? Let me just make a continuation of these two lines so it would be kind of easier. So what happens if we will uh, rotate uh, these two lines by 90 degree? Well, obviously, since these two lines, this one and this one, are perpendicular to these two lines, and we will turn it by 90 degree, then this will go here, and this will go here. And they will basically coincide. And depending on which side of the angle you take, it will be either congruence or supplementary uh, between these two angles. Um, so we have proven this through uh, the property of uh, uh, invariant transformation, the transformation which doesn't really change um, the, uh, the magnitude of the, uh, of the angle. So that's basically how congruence is uh, uh, considered in geometry. What are the congruent uh, geometrical objects? Those which can be brought um, uh, from one to another um, with non-deforming transformation, which are um, parallel shift and rotation and sometimes symmetry. So that's how we did it in this particular case. So angles with perpendicular sides are um, either congruent or supplementary to each other. Sum of three angles of any triangle is equal to two right angles with 180 degrees. Well, this is a very known fact to all students of geometry, uh, and the proof is basically quite elementary. Um, we draw a line parallel to the base, and obviously since these are parallel, then interior, alternate interior angles are congruent, and this one is congruent to this one. So the sum of one, two, three, interior angles of a triangle are equal to 1, 2, 3, which constitute 180 degrees, since this is a straight line. Very simple. Any exterior angle of a triangle is equal by measure to a sum of two interior angles, not supplemental with it. Okay. We do know, by the way, from the one of the previous theorems, that every exterior angle is greater than uh, any interior, not supplemental with it. Now, it's not just greater, it's equal exactly to the sum of these two. Now, how can we prove it? Well, um, let me think how can we prove it. What if we will draw a line parallel to this one? So, what do we have now? Now, this angle is the same as this. This angle is the same as this. Basically, that's how we proved the, uh, uh, that the sum of three angles is 180 degrees. Now, um, let's consider this angle, which is exter exterior angle. Now, this exterior angle obviously has this property, because these two angles are vertical. And now it's obvious that this exterior angle consists of this one, which is equal to this, and this one, which is congruent to this one. And that's why it's obvious that it's equal to sum of these. One exterior angle is equal to sum of two interior not congruent, not, not, not supplemental to it. Okay? So all it takes is just to come up with some additional drawing, additional line, 
uh, to make the whole thing quite obvious. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. Well, this doesn't even require a drawing, because if the sum of all triangles is 180 degrees, regardless of what triangle this is, and two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another, then the third one uh, is also supposed to be congruent, because the sum of three is supposed to be the same in both cases, which is 180 degrees. Okay, sum of two acute angles of any right triangle is equal to 90 degrees. Obviously, again, the same thing. Since the sum is 180 of all three angles, this one is 90, so these two should sum up to 90 degrees. In the right isosceles triangle, both acute angles are 45 degrees. Well, okay, if it's right isosceles triangle, which means two legs are equal in size, but that means that these two angles um, are congruent to each other because this is an isosceles triangle. So if they are um, in sum uh, 90 degrees, so each one of them is supposed to be a 45 degrees, obviously, since they are equal to each other. Okay, um, in the equilateral triangle, all angles are 60 degrees. Okay, now we have equilateral triangle when all three sides uh, are congruent to each other. Well, let's draw a median. Now, we know that in the isosceles triangle, a median and an angle bisector and the altitude are one and the same. So in this particular case, we, we have a situation uh, when we have two different um, uh, triangles, right triangles, by the way. So each one has um, 180 degree, if you will summarize these three angles, which means this and this, in sum, are 90 degrees too. So let's call this x. Now since this angle is supposed to be equal to this one, well actually I don't even need this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm complicating the issue which doesn't really need to be complicated. I already have, since it's equilateral triangle, then all three angles are the same, are congruent to each other. And since the sum is supposed to be 180 degrees, then obviously each one is 60 degrees. Now, why they are equal? Well, again, because it's isosceles from any side, which means this is equal to this, because these two sides are equal, this is equal to this because these sides are equal, etc. So basically all of these angles are congruent to each other. Sum is 180 degrees and uh, that's why each one is 60. Okay, um, that's it for this set of mini theorems. Um, I hope I wasn't too quick with all these theorems, but they are really trivial. Um, I do encourage you to look at the unizor.com webpage which contains lots of educational material, including uh, obviously these um, uh, problems, these mini theorems. And what's very important, uh, uh, it's very useful for, uh, for parents who would like to supervise the educational process of their children, since uh, the website contains exams, uh, and uh, every exam is scored in some way or another, so the parents can actually check the score on every exam What's the maximum score? What's the score of my student? And basically make a decision to pass or fail any particular enrollment which, uh, which was done for this, for this particular student. That's it. Good luck. Thank you very much.